Hello everyone, it's October 20, 2022, and Hans Niemann finally breaks the silence about the drama. He tweets, my lawsuit speaks for itself. Let's read in. United States District Court, Eastern District of Missouri, Eastern Division, Hans Moog Niemann, plaintiff, Sven Magnus Carlsen, Play Magnus Group, Just Come, Daniel Ranch, and Hikaru Nakamura. All right. Complaint. Plaintiff Hans Moog Niemann, Niemann by and through his attorneys Ovid and Ovid LLP and local Missouri counsel, the Garner Law Firm, alleges upon information and belief as follows. Nature of action. Niemann is a 19-year-old self-taught chess prodigy. He brings, his, he brings his action to recover from the devastating damages that defendants have inflicted upon his reputation, career, and life by egregiously defaming him and unlawfully leading to blacklist him from the profession to which he has dedicated his life. In 2014, Neiman became the youngest ever winner of the Tuesday Night Marathon at the Mechanics Institute Chess Club, the oldest chess club in the United States, earning him the title of US Chess Federation Master. By December 2020, FIDE, the international governing body of professional chess, awarded Neiman its, highly, uh, its highest honor by naming him a chess grandmaster. By October 2020, FIDE ranked Neiman as the 40th best chess player in the world, tied for the fourth youngest player in the top 50. Chess is Neiman's life. His gift for playing chess earned him a scholarship to the prestigious Columbia Grammar and Preparatory School in New York City, a school he could only attend by simultaneously working full-time to support himself financially. Since the age of 16, Neiman's sole means of supporting himself has been through the money he makes teaching chess and participating in chess tournaments. Prior to the events giving rise to this complaint, Neiman lived out of a suitcase, traveling the world to compete in chess tournaments. Defendant Sven Magnus Un Carlsen, Carlsen is a 31-year-old chess player from Norway. He is presently the five-time reigning world chess champion and the highest-ranked chess player in history. Carlsen has exploited his notoriety and success in chess to create an incredibly lucrative global brand and online chess company, the Play Magnus Group. Play Magnus. Prior to the acts given rise to this complaint, Play Magnus proudly touted Neiman as one of its brand ambassadors. Over the years, Play Magnus has grown into one of the largest online chess companies in the world, second only to the multi-billion dollar behemoth Chess.com. LLC, Chess.com. In August 2022, Chess.com agreed to acquire Play Magnus for nearly $83 million and merge the two companies in order to monopolize the chess world. Carlsen, having solidified his position as the king of chess, believes that when it comes to chess, he can do whatever he wants and get away with it. On September 4th, 2022, Niemann soundly defeated Carlsen during an in-person game at the prestigious Singfield Cup chess tournament in St. Louis, Missouri. Notably, this was not the first time that Neiman beat Carlsen at chess, just the first time he did so at a FIDE sanction event. Neiman's upset victory effectively dashed Carlsen's two remaining statistical ambitions, namely achieving a 2900 FIDE performance rating for the first time in history and breaking his own world record unbeaten streak in FIDE sanctioned events. These accomplishments, if achieved, would have solidified Carlsen as arguably the greatest chess player of all time and made his burguing chess empire even more valuable. Making matters worse for Carlsen, Neiman embarrassed Carlsen by, by playfully taunting him during his post-match interview. Notorious for, his inability to, notorious for his inability to cope with defeat, Carlsen snapped. Enraged that the young Neiman, fully 12 years his junior, dared to disrespect the king of chess and fearful that the young prodigy would further blemish his multi-million dollar brand by beating him again, Carlsen viciously and maliciously retaliated against Neiman by falsely accusing Neiman, without any evidence of somehow cheating during their in-person game and demanding that the organizers of the Singfield Cup immediately disqualify Neiman from the tournament. When tournament officials refused to comply with Carlsen's corrupt and cowardly demand to baselessly eliminate Neiman from the competition, Carlsen lashed out again, this time by boycotting the remainder of the Singfield Cup in protest, an unprecedented act for a top chess professional, let alone the reigning world champion. Carlsen then confirmed his defamatory accusations against Neiman with a provocative post on Twitter, which had the intended effect of disseminating Carlsen's false accusations that Neiman had cheated against him across the globe. 
Days later, Carlsen was scheduled to play Neiman again in the Julius Beer Generation Cup. Rather than to seek rather than seek to redeem himself from his unexpected loss to Neiman, Carlsen, the king of chess, godlessly forfeited the game after making one move and then issued a press release repeating his false accusations that Neiman had cheated against him at the Singfield Cup. Carlson's unprecedented actions, coupled with his unfounded accusations, sent shockwaves through the chess world and instantly thrust Neiman into the center of what is now widely reported as the, big, as the single biggest chess scandal in history. Due to his unparalleled stature and influence in the chess community, Carlson knew that the public would believe his accusations of cheating against Neiman, even though Carlson had no legitimate basis to believe Neiman had actually cheated against him. Two, he would ensure that no reputable chess tournament would invite Neiman to compete in the future. And three, his false accusations would cause other top chess players to boycott Neiman as well. Following Carlson's defamatory accusations, a flurry of independent and unbiased sources, including the tournament organizers and arbiters of, this, of the Singfield Cup, FIDE and the world's foremost experts in cheat detection, have uniformly confirmed that there is no evidence that Neiman cheated in any of his games against Carlsen, including at the Singfield Cup, particularly given the more than, sample, than ample anti-cheating security measures used at the event, unbiased top chess analysts have dissected Neiman and Carlsen's Singfield Cup game in excruciating detail and concluded that Neiman's victory resulted more from Carlsen's particularly poor play than Neiman's particularly exceptional play. Nonetheless, following Carlson's baseless and retali retaliatory accusations, Carlson unleashed his media empire to fan the flames of Carlson's cheating accusations, drown out the legitimate evidence refuting them, blacklist Neiman from top-level chess tournaments, and pro protect at any cost his epo eponymous play Magnus brand and status as king of chess almost immediately thereafter. Chess.com, in collusion with Carlsen and Play Magnus, immediately banned Neiman from its website and all of its future events. To lend credence to Carlsen's unsubstantiated and defamatory accusations of cheating, defendant Hikaru Nakamura, Nakamura Chess.com's most influential streaming partner, acting in collusion with Carlsen and Chess.com, published hours of video content amplifying and attempting to bolster, to bolster Carlson's false cheating allegations against Neiman with numerous additional defamatory statements, and Chessacom executive Danny Ranch, Ranch issued defamatory press releases and leaked defamatory reports to prominent ch press outlets falsely accusing Neiman of lying in his post-match Singfield Cup interview regarding his use of a chess engine in a handful of recreational online games when he was a child. To bolster Carlson's unsubstantiated defamatory accusations that Neiman cheated against him at the Sink Field Cup. I'll also put a link to the Chessicom report in the description. Despite the falsity of defendants' accusations, defendants' malicious defamat def defamat defamation and unlawful collusion has by design, destroyed Neiman's remarkable career in its prime and ruined his life. As a result of Play Magnus and Chessicom's collusion to blacklist him from chess, Neiman can no longer compete in any online Chessicom or Play Magnus tournaments and will not receive invitations to in person events sponsored by Chessicom or Play Magnus, which collectively comprise the majority of FIDE sanctioned chess tournaments. Already based on defendants' defamatory accusations, the Chessicom Global Championship revoked Neiman's invitation to play in that tournament in October 2022. Even though Neiman earned that invitation through his exceptional play, two, teenage Grandmaster Vincent Keimer canceled his upcoming game with Neiman in Germany, and three, the Tata Steel Chess Tournament, one of chess's most pre prestigious tournaments, immediately ceased its ongoing arrangements for Neiman to play in its January 2023 tournament, and four, Neiman cannot obtain employment as a chess teacher at a reputable school. Accordingly, Neiman, Neiman asserts the following claims against defendants. Slander, libel, unlawful group boycott under, under the Sherman Act, and four, tortuous interference with contract and business expectancies, and five, civil conspiracy. Neiman seems, 
Neiman seeks damages in an amount to be determined at trial, but no less than $100 million. Parties. Plaintiff Hans Mug Neiman is a natural person and a Connecticut resident. Defendant Sven Magnus Ern Carlsen is a natural person residing in Norway. Defendant Play Magnus, Play Magnus Group is a Norway limited liability company founded and owned in wool or in part by Carlsen. Defendant Chesacom LLC is a Nevada limited liability company with a principal place of business in Mount View, California. Upon information and belief, Chesacom's members reside in Utah and California. Defendant Daniel Ranch, aka Danny Ranch, is a natural person residing in Utah. Defendant Hikar Nakamura is a natural person residing in Florida. Jurisdiction and Venue This court has jurisdiction pursuant to 28 U.S.C. 1331 and 1337 because Neiman's claims arise out of federal law, namely 15 U.S.C. 1. The court has ju supplemental jurisdiction over Neiman's state law claims pursuant to 28 U.S.C. 1367. Upon information and belief, this court also has jurisdiction over this action pursuant to 28 U.S.C. 1332, as none of the defendants reside in Neiman's home state of Connecticut. Venue is proper in this district pursuant to 28 U.S.C. 139b2, because a substantial part of the events giving rise to the claims occurred in this district. Facts. The key players and their roles. FIDE and its oversight of professional chess. Since 1924, chess has been regulated by the International Chess Federation, a Swiss-based federation popularly known by its French acronym FIDE, Fédération Internationale des Échecs. In its current form, FIDE is made up of national chess organizations in 200 countries and has been recognized by the International Olympic Committee as an official globing sporting organization. As the official body overseeing professional chess, FIDE sets the rules of international chess competitions, organizers, organizes and sanctions the highest level professional chess tournaments, including the World Chess Championship, and certifies tournament arbiters, in other words, referees or un umpires. In addition, one of FIDE's most important functions is to calculate professional chess players' official performance ratings. These official ratings are used for several purposes, including bestowing professional titles such as Grandmaster and determining which players qualify for professional tournaments. FIDE calculates these official, these official performance ratings using an algorithm known as the ELO rating system. Only events that are officially sanctioned by FIDE affect players' official FIDE performance ratings. To qualify as an officially sanctioned FIDE event, a tournament or match must adhere to strict parameters established by FIDE. Prior to 2021, FIDE only officially sanctioned matches and tournaments that, that were held in person, with participants playing their matches over the board. In other words, physically sitting across from each other and moving their chess pieces by hand. FIDE employs strict anti-cheating procedures, such as screening players for metal and electro electronic devices, broadcasting games with time delays, and tightly observing the players during their matches. Currently, the vast majority of official FIDE sanctions events are still conducted in person, with only a few select events taking place online. FIDE-sanctioned online events also employ strict anti-cheating protections to ensure that those online matches are played fairly. Neiman, however, has never participated in a FIDE-sanctioned event that was not over the board. The day-to-day -day operations of each of the FIDE-sanctioned tournaments are run by tournament organizers, in conjunction with FIDE, the tournament organizers. Tournament organizers are responsible for, among other things, tournament logistics, security, and anti-cheating, or fair play measures. Chessacom and its economic dominance in the chess world. Outside of official chess events and tournaments sanctioned and regulated by FIDE, the authoritative body governing professional chess, there are a large variety of websites and online applications, including Chessacom, on which people of any skill level, novices, enthusiasts, and professionals alike can play recreational chess. Over the past three decades, 
these casual chess platforms have seen a meteoric rise in popularity, largely due to the ease with which they allow individuals of all skill levels to play recreational chess quickly and easily with others all over the world. Through a series of acquisitions, Chessacom has become by far the world's largest and most popular online chess company. Chessacom currently has more than 90 million members who play over 10 million online chess games on its website each day. This is more than three times the number of games hosted by the next largest chess website, leechess.org, which is a free and open source website maintained by a non-profit organization. To attract members to its platforms, Chessacom solicits top chess professionals from all over the world to play recreational Chessacom matches and create content on its platforms, pursuant to streaming partner agreements. Players with streaming partner agreements, streaming partners, create content, including articles, interviews, and streaming videos, during which top players play chess live and, and or offer commentary regarding topics of interest to chess fans. Chessacom employs many of the world's most famous competitive players, including Carlsen and Nakamura. Chessacom allows members to follow their favorite chess players for easier access to those players' games and content. Nakamura, for instance, has over 1 million followers on Chessacom and Carlsen has over 64,000. While Chessacom provides an online rating system for its members, that rating system is completely separate from and has no bearing whatsoever on a player's official FIDE performance rating. Rather, a player's, per rather, a ch player's Chessacom rating is a private and unofficial tool that members can use to help identify and play other Chessacom members with roughly the same skill level. Accordingly, a professional chess player's performance on Chessacom has absolutely no effect on their professional rankings, qualifications for other FIDE sanctions event or official records and statistics. Moreover, while Chessacom occasionally hosts tournaments and events on its online platform in which top-ranked professional chess players participate and compete for prize money, Chessacom does not host any FIDE sanctioned events on its platform. For the most part, professional, professional chess players use Chessacom merely to connect with fans, increase their visibility in the chess community and gain followers to enhance their personal brands, or simply to have fun and play chess in a relaxed and official atmosphere. For example, despite Carlson's obsession with his FIDE ranking and unbeaten streaks, Chessacom's own statistics reveal that he, is, that he has lost at least 40 online chess games on Chessacom in the past month alone. Even though Chessacom has no official role in governing professional chess and does not host any FIDE sanctioned events on, it plat on its platform, it is nevertheless a dominant form in the professional chess world by virtue of its enormous revenues and influence as the world's dominant online chess site. For example, Chessacom is a major corporate sponsor of almost every important and prestigious professional chess tournament around the world, including FIDE sanctioned in-person chess tournaments and events. Thus, despite being unable to rank players, govern official chess rules and regulations, or host FIDE sanctioned events on its platform, Chessacom can exert its dominance to determine which players will succeed or fail by controlling who is and who is not invited to the events and tournament, tournaments it sponsors, and who can use its leading online Chessacom platform. As the dominant source of chess-related news and events, access to Chessacom also has a major influence on top chess players' image and public exposure. Chess.com's Chief Chess Officer, Wrench. Wrench is an international master level player, which is one level below Grandmaster. He is one of Chess.com's top executives, holding the, title, holding the title Chief Chess Officer. Wrench is the public face of Chess.com and a well-known figure in the chess world for his coverage and commentary for Chess.com's flagship online events, as well as over-the-board tournaments sponsored by Chess.com. Carlson... Carlson and his company Play Magnus, formerly Chessacom's main competitor. Pr practically synonymous with professional chess, Carlson is a FIDE Grandmaster who has won every World Chess Championship since 2013. He is the single highest peak ELO rating in the history of chess of 2882. Carlson interacts with the public through his popular Twitter account, at Magnus Carlson, which has nearly 
800,000 followers in a highly visible streaming channel sponsored by Chess.com. In 2014, Carlson founded Play Magnus, which after Chess.com has become the second most dominant commercial enterprise in chess. Over the years, Play Magnus expanded its reach in the chess world by acquiring other chess websites and chess content creators. In 2019, Play Magnus acquired the, ch the chess websites chess24.com and chessable.com. Chess24.com is one of the most popular chess websites worldwide and hosts one of the two largest chess internet chess servers other than chess.com. In 2020, Play Magnus expanded further by acquiring the US website iChess.net. In 2021, Play Magnus acquired the Dutch magazine New in Chess and the publisher Everyman Chess. As stated on its website, Carlson through uh, Carlson, though Play Magnus united some of the most exciting chess brands and platforms into one strong ecosystem to grow the sport of chess. Under his own personal brand, Play Magnus's explicitly stated mission is to define the future of chess. On July 19, 2022, Carlson announced that he would not defend the chess world championship title that, is, that he has held since 2013. Instead, Carlson would focus on two personal goals that he believed would solidify his stature as the greatest chess player of all time. One, breaking his own world record unbeaten streak of 125 consecutive FIDE sanctioned matches, and two, achieving an official FIDE performance rating of 2900, which has never been accomplished in the history of chess. Chess.com streamer Hikaru Nakamura. Nakamura is a chess card master who, at his peak, was ranked second in the world by FIDE. Nakamura is by far Chess.com's most popular streaming partner, with nearly 1 million followers on Chess.com. Nakamura also operates streaming channels on multiple other social media platforms. For example, in 2018, Nakamura began streaming on the Twitch platform under the channel name GM Hikaru. On February 14, 2021, Nakamura reached a milestone of, of 1 million followers on his Twitch channel. Nakamura uses these channels to stream the chess matches he plays online and to offer a grand Grandmaster Chess player's insight and commentary on current events in the world of competitive chess. Nakamura has publicly stated that he prioritizes his streaming career over his chess playing career. Nakamura also operates a server called Nakamura's Park University on Discord, a popular voice and text messaging social media platform, and has a Twitter account with over 430,000 followers. In addition, Nakamura has a YouTube channel, which had over 1,390,000 subscribers as of October 2022. As Chessacom's most prolific online personality, Nakamura has a well-documented history of abusing his leverage, which has come to blacklist competitors, accuse players of cheating, and damage the careers of up-and-coming chess players. Nakamura has also had an acrimonious relationship with Neiman for several years, dating back to when they both worked as streamer streamers for Chess.com and Nakamura viewed Neiman as a threat to his dominance of chess streaming platforms. Neiman and his meteoric rise from child prodigy to FIDE top 40 player. Neiman is American chess prodigy. At the age of 11, he became the youngest player to win the Tuesday night marathon, a tournament held at the Mechanics Institute Chess Club, the oldest chess club in the United States. This victory earned Neiman the title of U.S. Chess Federation Master. At the age of 16, Neiman, who received no financial support or assistance from his family or anyone else, moved to New York City after receiving a scholarship to attend the prestigious Columbia Grammar and Preparatory School. While in school, Neiman supported himself by teaching chess at other prestigious schools, including the Nightingale Bamford School and the Browning School, and participating in professional chess tournaments. At the age of 17, Pide granted Neiman the title of Grandmaster. Since then, Neiman, by playing a record number of games in 2021, has been steadily climbing Fide's ranks. By virtue of his decision to dedicate himself wholly and completely to playing in Fide-sanctioned chess tournaments, Neiman rose in the rankings to 40th in the world, with a Fide performance rating of 2699. Chess becomes merger with Play Magnus to monopolize chess. 
In August 2022, shortly before Neiman's victory against Carlsen at the Sinkfield Cup, Play Magnus and Chessacom announced that Play Magnus accepted an offer to be acquired by Chessacom for approximately $83 million, with plans to merge the two companies and monopolize the chess world. The merger. The merger's announcement was personally made by Wrench and Carlsen in a split screen video, as depicted below. When Chessacom and Play Magnus announced the merger, on August 24, 2022, they estimated that it would take approximately six to eight weeks to finalize the transaction. Thus, at the time Neiman defeated Carlson at the Sinkfield Cup, Carlson and Chessacom were in the midst of negotiating terms for Carlson's sale of his play Magnus brand. Upon announcing the merger, it was reported that with this, there is no other realistic chess competitor in sight apart from the open source and free Lee Chess platform. Raising questions about monopolistic issues in the space and the reasons behind Chessacom's recent price hike. Once completed, the merger will further solidify Chessacom's monopoly over chess industry by, among other things, providing its total control over Chess24, one of the last few alternatives for, to Chessacom for online chess and purchasing the Play Magnus brand, which has become virtually synonymous with chess. Neiman's surprise upset at the Sinkfield Cup. Between September 1st and September 13, 2022, Neiman competed in the Sinkfield Cup, an annual FIDE sanctioned invitation only chess tournament in St. Louis, Missouri, with a total prize pool of uh, $350,000. The Sinkfield Cup is one leg of the Grand Chess Tour, a series of international chess tournaments featuring the top chess players in the world with a total prize pool of $1.4 million. All of the matches in the Sinkfield Cup were held live and in person, in other words, over the board. The third round of the, of the Sinkfield Cup took place on September 4th, 2022, with Neiman facing Carlsen. By all accounts, Neiman was a massive underdog, particularly given that Carlsen was playing with the white pieces, which afforded Carlsen the distinct competitive advantage of making the first move in the game. Yet, unlike the vast majority of Carlsen's opponents, Neiman was not intimidated by Carlsen's stature and did not play for a draw like most would have done. Neiman played to win. He attacked Carlsen early and flipped the advantage to the black pieces, which rattled Carlsen for the remainder of the game. Unnerved by Neiman's unexpected confidence and early strategic advantage, Carlsen made numerous mistakes upon which Neiman capitalized to secure a tremendous victory over Carlsen which, by all accounts, should have propelled Neiman's career to the next level and allowed him to continue realizing his enormous potential as the next great American chess player. Unbeknownst to Neiman at the time, defendants would do whatever it took to ensure that this would never happen. Neiman not only beat Carlsen, Neiman embarrassed Carlsen by defeating him with the black pieces and playfully taunting him during him and after their match. He also shattered Carlsen's historic 53-game unbeaten streak and made it practically impossible to ever achieve a 2900 FIDE performance rating. What is more, Neiman handed Carlsen this stunning upset while Carlsen was in the midst of negotiating and finalizing the merger to solidify Carlsen's chess empire around his play Magnus Brandt. Carlsen responds by falsely and baselessly accusing Neiman of cheating. As a result of this shocking defeat, Carlsen snapped. Unable to accept the reality of his unexpected loss, Carlsen reflex, reflexively retaliated by defaming Neiman to Michael Kodarkovsky, the executive director of the Grand Chester, falsely accusing Neiman of cheating during their game and demanding that Neiman be immediately disqualified. Carlsen knew that Neiman's sudden expulsion from a major professional chess tournament would send a clear, albeit false, message to the public that Neiman cheated. Because Carlsen had absolutely no evidence of Neiman's cheating, Kodarkovsky refused to comply with Carlsen's dictatorial command. Yet this did not stop Carlsen from disseminating his false and defamatory accusations that Neiman cheated. It merely forced him to be more creative. Carlson rose to the challenge by first convincing Kodakowski to dramatically enhance the anti-cheating measures at the Sinkfield Cup, including by adding military-grade metal detection scans and a 50-minute tape delay on all broadcasts of tournament games. 
Carlson knew that the sudden, unnecessary, un and unexplained implementation of these new anti-cheating measures would be interpre interpreted by the chess community and the public to mean that the, to mean that the tournament operators had a legitimate basis to believe that one or some of its players had cheated. Then at 2 p.m. on September 5th, 2022, the day after Neiman's shocking upset, Carlson publicly announced on his Twitter page that he had withdrawn from the Sinkfield Cup. I suppose this has to be 2022. In that Twitter post, Carlson linked to a video of soccer manager Jose Mourinho in famously reacting to a controversial referee de decision by saying, I prefer really not to speak. If I speak, I am in big trouble. Carlson's Twitter post is re reproduced below. Magnus Carlson, I've withdrawn from the tournament. I've always enjoyed playing in the St. Louis Chess Club and hope to be back in the future. And here the video. I guess I will also post it in the description. Carlson knew full well that withdrawing in the middle of a prestigious high-profile professional chess tournament like the St. Field Cup is virtually unheard of for any top level chess player, let alone the reigning chess world champion widely considered to be the greatest chess player in history. By insisting that the Singh Field Cup imposed enhanced anti-cheating measures after his loss to Neiman, resigning from the tournament immediately thereafter and then referencing a famous video of a soccer coach refraining from publicly accusing referees of misconduct, Carlsen conveyed a clear and unmistakable message to the public. Then Neiman only beat Carlsen because Neiman cheated. As Carlsen intended, the chess world and the public at large received Carlsen's defamatory message loud and clear. On September 6, 2022, worldchess.com posted an article titled Did Hans Neiman Actually Cheat? All the info so far, which stated, Yesterday, Magnus Carlsen withdrew from the Singfold Cup 2022 after his loss to Hans Neiman in round 3. Multiple tweets, streams, comments, and security checks later, the accusation of Neiman cheating is pretty obvious. On September 7, 2022, Slade posted an article titled The Chess World is Absolutely Losing It Over Cheating Allegations After Massive Upset, stating that Carlson's implications rocked the chess community, which quickly began speculating online that Neiman must have cheated despite no evidence of foul play being presented from Carlsen or event organizers. Also, on September 7, 2022, ABC News Australia released an article stating that Carlsen announced his withdrawal via a cryptic tweet on Tuesday morning, which was interpreted by many commentators, including leading American Grandmaster Hikaru Nakamura, as alluding to foul play. On September 8, 2022, Chessbase.com posted an article stating, In the last few days, the chess world has been in enormous upheaval after the world champion Magnus Carlsen withdrew from the Sinkfield Cup in protest after three rounds, with an unspoken accusation of cheating of the player who had defeated him, US rising star Hans Niemann. On September 9, 2022, The Guardian newspaper published an article noting that Carlsen's only explanation for why he withdrew from the Sinkfield Cup was a cryptic video clip of the football manager Jose Mourinho saying, if I speak, I am in big trouble. During a press conference about referees, this was widely interpreted as raising suspicions of cheating. That article also noted that Carlson's games at the Singfield Cup will be rated and a defeat by Neiman will cost him seven rating points, a large setback in the context of trying to get from 2865 to 2900. His dream of a record rating has just become more distant. Also on September 9, 2022, Vice News published an article explaining that the public took Carlson's cryptic tweet to mean that the only reason why Neiman won was because he cheated. Carlson enlisted his new business partner, Chessacom, and co-conspirator -cons Nakamura to bolster his false accusations that Neiman cheated against him. After Carlsen succeeded in laying the groundwork against Neiman with his initial defamatory accusations of cheating, he unleashed the full force of his newly broadened media empire to publicly bolster those allegations and drown out any legitimate sources of opposition that demonstrated why Carlsen's allegations were untrue. Immediately after Carlsen announced his withdrawal from the Singfold Cup in a manner maliciously calculated to communicate to the world that Neiman had cheated during their match, Chess.com banned Neiman from its website. 
deleted Neiman's Slack account and forbade Neiman from participating in any further Chesselcom events. By design, this sudden ban at the precise time that Carlson accused Neiman of cheating against him added instant credibility to Carlson's false allegations and suggested that they were true. Otherwise, there would be no reason for Chesacom to suddenly ban Neiman immediately after he defeated Carlson. To bolster this unprecedented joint ban, which effectively blacklisted Neiman from professional chess, Nakamura leveraged his platform as Chesacom's top streamer and credibility as a top chess player to engage in an all-out blitz of defamatory accusations to further confirm that Carlson accused Neiman of cheating and to make it appear that those accusations are true. First, on September 5th, 2022, Nakamura stated numerous times during one of his widely viewed streaming videos that it was very obvious that Carlson withdrew from the Sinkfield Cup because Neiman had, cheering, had cheated during their match. Magnus did not withdraw because he was pissed at losing the game. Let's put it this way. I mean, I've played with Magnus for the last 20 years. He did not withdraw because he lost the game. I mean, it's pretty obvious why Magnus withdrew. It is very obvious why he withdrew and that there's no doubt in my mind why he withdrew. No doubt. Zero doubt. I already said it. Magnus literally posted a video saying if I speak, I'm in big trouble. Yeah, it's very clear what he's implying. There's no doubt in my mind. We know why, we know why Magnus withdrew. There's zero doubt. There's zero doubt why he withdrew. If they're on a 15 minute delay, that says it all. If they're on a 15 minute delay, then we know the reason why Magnus withdrew from the event. Plain and simple. That's all I need to say. They were not on a delay for the first four rounds. Four rounds. Yeah, yeah, it's that simple. Second, as the formerly second highest ranked chess player in the world who taught his inside knowledge regarding Chessacom, Nakamura knew that if he accused Neiman of cheating or stated that he believed Neiman cheated, the public would assume that those accusations and our opinions were based on his inside knowledge and expertise in chess. And this should be credited as true. To bolster that credibility, Nakamura made several false and defamatory statements suggesting that he had such specialized knowledge not known to the public, further proving that Carlson's accusations against Neiman were true. I've heard similar accusations from a lot of different chess players in regard to Neiman's over-the-board over -board shots. I'm obviously not going to say names, but these people I know, I know these people, I know these are people, I know people that I respect, very prominent people in the chess community. I heard about this directly from someone in St. Louis. One of the players doing the Rapid and Blitz who said that they are basically certain that Hans has done something and then Magnus withdraws from the event. So it's very, very strange. Neiman's explanation of how he beat Carlsen is complete nonsense. It's just not possible because this is such an obscure line. There's no way you're looking at it, at it to this degree. I'll just say this as someone who has played, who has played a lot of games. If you're super prepared and you look at something that morning, you blitz out the first 20 moves. If you looked at it that morning, you just blitz out all the moves. You don't pretend. You don't use 12 minutes. You use like 3 or 4 minutes on one specific move. That's how it works. This is weird. This analysis by Neiman is not 2700 level analysis. This is not 2700 level analysis. Like Alejandro, like Alejandro is outplaying him as the interview. Alejandro is not even using the engine and he's outplaying him. During that same streaming video, Nakamura also published, republished a tweet from an account named Unsubstantiated Chess Rumors, falsely stating that top players know that Neiman has been banned twice on Chess.com for cheating. Which statement Nakamura falsely presented as fact, claiming this is a legitimate tweet. During his stream the next day, on September 6, 2022, Nakamura continued to amplify Carlson's allegations and reiterated that his own specialized knowledge proved that Carlson's accusations were true. This is something that has been going on for a long time. I've heard from many different people, and when Magnus is a world champion essentially, I think it's saying there's something weird going on. You start to look at it a bit differently. Why would Magnus say this if, there, if there's literally no hard proof? Like I said, amongst grandmasters, this rumor has been around forever. I've heard it, I've sum summarily dismissed it many different times, but actual top players are saying stuff now. Nakamura's statements were false and defamatory, including because Neiman did not cheat against Carlsen in the September 4th, 2022 Singfield Cup match, and because Neiman had not previously been banned twice on Chessacom for cheating. 
Yet as Nakamura well knew, his reputation as one of the world's top chess players allowed him to hurl these false and complete unsubstantiated accusations against Neiman and the public would regard them as fact. In response to Carlsen and Nakamura's accusations, Neiman gave an interview unequivocally denying that he had cheated in the Sinkville Cup match against Carlsen on September 4th, 2022 or in any other FIDE sanction event. During that interview, Neiman, hoping to set the record straight, also responded to Nakamura's accusations of online cheating in recreational games by candidly admitting that when he was 12 and 16 years old, he had regrettably used a chess engine, a computer program designed to calculate the optimal chess move in any given situation. In a handful of non-FIDE sanctioned uh, recreational chess matches he played online on chess.com. Neiman expressed deep remorse for using a chess engine in these Chessicom games, calling it the worst mistake of his life. Just days later, Chessicom and Wrench piled on their own false accusations regarding Neiman's online chess play on Chessicom. These false accusations were specifically designed to depict Neiman as a serial cheater, and thus reinforced Carlsen's accusations that Neiman cheated against him over the board at the FIDE-sanctioned Sinkfield Cup. Specifically, on September 8, 2022, at 6.58pm, Wrench caused Chessicom's Twitter account to post the following statement. Dear chess community, the last few days have been tumultuous for many in the chess community. At this time, we have reached out to Hans Niemann to explain our decision to privately remove him from Chessicom and our events. We have shared detailed evidence with him concerning our decision including information that contradicts his statements regarding the amount and seriousness of his cheating on chess.com. We have invited Hans to provide an explanation and response with the hope of finding a resolution where Hans can again participate on chess.com. We want nothing more than to see the best chess players in the world succeed in the greatest events. We will always act to protect the integrity of the game that we all love. Danny Rens, Chief Chess Officer, chess.com. Chessacom and Ranch's above statement is false. Neiman did not lie about the amount and seriousness of his cheating on Chessacom. In addition, Chessacom had not shared detailed evidence with Neiman that contradicts his statements regarding the amount and seriousness of his cheating on Chessacom. These are trumped up false allegations specifically designed to further defame Neiman by accusing him of not only being a serial online cheater, but now also a liar. All right. Here's a footnote, notwithstanding Neiman's remorse for experimenting with a chess engine on Chessicom as a child, it is important to reiterate that these are merely recreational games having nothing to do with Neiman's or anyone else's FIDE performance rating or global rank. As stated above, all of Neiman's FIDE matches, including his victory over Crossan at the Sinkfield Cup, were in person over the board and tightly observed and secure conditions where he could not and did not cheat. To unless otherwise indicated, all emphasis herein is added. Okay, in fact, the very first public comment to this tweet was Ha, Hans is a liar. Chessicom's additional false accusations had the intended effect of further fanning the flames of Carlson's initial defamatory accusations that Neiman cheated against him over the board at the Sinkfield Cup. For example, on September 9, 2022, Jinx Esports TV wrote in an article that Chess.com banned Neiman after finding evidence supporting the striking allegations by Carlson and Chess.com. Conspiracy theories began going viral on, on the internet, no longer concerned with whether Neiman actually cheated, but rather how he could have possibly cheated in an overboard game with strict anti-cheating protocols. These swirling conspiracy theories were so outrageous that they garnered the attention of, among many others, Elon Musk, who spread them in posts on Twitter, and Stephen Colbert, who spread them on The Late Show with Stephen Colbert. Elon Musk has 107.8 million Twitter followers, and The Late Show with Stephen Colbert has 2.3 million viewers as of August 2022. Moreover, given that even according to Chessicom, Neiman had years earlier resolved Chessicom's issues with Neiman's use of an engine during certain recreational online games, and Neiman had never done so again. Chessicom's sudden ban of Neiman from Chessicom, purportedly based on cheating on Chessicom, could not be a more obvious pretext for its collusion with Carlsen and Play Magnus to destroy Neiman's reputation and blacklist him from professional chess. Defendants continued to defame Neiman after another match with Carlsen. 
On September 19, 2022, after defendants' defamatory accusations had already been widely disseminated worldwide, Neiman and Carlson were slated to play each other again at the Julius Baer Generation Cup. As the reigning chess champion, Carlson would have seized the op this opportunity to redeem himself from this upside loss at the Singfield Cup or put the scandal to rest by admitting that he had no reason to believe that Neiman had actually cheated against him. Instead, Carlson chose to pour more gasoline on the fire. He started by resigning his match with Neiman after making one move, another unprecedented act for any top professional player. By doing so, Carlson intentionally sent another clear message to the public that Carlson stood by his prior accusation that Neiman had cheated against him at the Singfield Cup, and that the public onslaught he unleashed against Neiman was truthful, justified, and should continue. As the Daily News wrote on September 19, 2022, Carlson's the world best player for over a decade abruptly quit an online match and mid allegations that his opponent, American Grandmaster Hans Neiman, is a devious cheat. As the BBC noted on September 23, 2022, any thoughts that the issue of cheating might be put to bed were quickly dashed when Carlson resigned after making only one move, an apparent protest at Neiman's participation. In an interview on September 21, 2022, Carlson was asked about the meaning behind his abrupt resignation against Neiman in the Julius Baer Generation Cup. Carlson laughed and declined to comment, but then boasted people can draw their own conclusions, and they certainly, certainly have. A not-so-subtle endorsement of the swirling accusations and conspiracy theories that defendants created by accusing Neiman of cheating against Carlson and lying about cheating in the past. N meanwhile, Carlson was privately disseminating his false cheating accusations numerous members of the chess community, including chess commentator Lawrence Trent. Moreover, to further fuel his prior defamatory accusations, Carlson maliciously added yet another accusation into the mix by, star by sarcastically stating, I have to say I'm very impressed by Neiman's play, and I think his mentor Maxim Dlugi must be doing a great job. Maxim Dlugi is not Neiman's coach or mentor and has no involvement whatsoever with Neiman's training or preparation. Maxim Dlugi is a professional chess player who is rumored to have cheated in online games on chess.com. Accordingly, for those familiar with chess, falsely associating associating Neiman's play with Dulugi was a direct accusation that Maxim Dulugi somehow helped Neiman cheat against Carlsen at the Singfield Cup. The reporter, well aware of the message Carlsen was sending, noted to Carlsen, you mentioned a name there, I think maybe a trainer of Hans Neiman, that he is doing a good job, and asked if Carlsen could say more about that. Is that because you think Dulugi is helping Hans in the games? Carlsen confirmed the accusation by laughing and stating that he hoped to say a little bit more after the tournament. However, Carlson's purposeful suggestion was more than enough for Nakamura, who immediately took it to his streaming channels to fuel the next round of defamatory conspiracy theories against Neiman. On September 2022, Nakamura played a recording of Carlson's interview on his streaming channel and specifically highlighted Carlson's accusation that Neiman helped Carlson cheat against him. Nakamura stated that it's very clear why Magnus is name dropping. Dlugi, there's no doubt in anybody's mind. The reason he named out Dlugi is because Dlugi has been caught doing something wrong in tournaments on chess.com. Nakamura also made this false statement that, as we know now, Hans Niemann did go to Max Dlugi's academy in New York City for a short while. That statement is false because Niemann did not ever go to Maxim Dlugi's academy in New York City even for a short while. Carlson issues a statement explicitly accusing Neiman of cheating against him and confirming his attention to blacklist Neiman from professional chess. On September 26, 2022, Carlson issued a statement on his Twitter account explicitly accusing Neiman of cheating against him at the Singfield Cup. Specifically, Carlson's statement reads in pertinent part, I believe that Neiman has cheated more and more recently than he has publicly admitted. His over-the-board progress has been unusual, and throughout our game in the Singfield Cup, I had the impression that he wasn't tense or even fully concentrating on the game in critical positions. While outplaying me as black in a way I think only a handful of players can do, this game contributed to changing my perspective. As is evident, Carlson's statement makes the factual accusation that caused that Neiman has cheated more and more recently than he has publicly admitted, including during his match with Carlson at the Singfield Cup. Moreover, to support his defamatory accusation, Carlson represents that he 
possesses private and un and undisclosed facts justifying his false factual assert assertion that Neiman cheated against him. Carlson's September 26, 2022 statement goes on to make crystal clear his attempt to blacklist Neiman from future top-tier professional chess tournaments and events. We must do something about cheating, and for my part going forward, I don't want to play against people that have cheated repeatedly in the past, because I don't know what they are capable of doing in the future. There's more I would like to say. Unfortunately, at this time, I'm limited in what I can say without explicit inf permission from Neiman to speak openly. So far, I've only been able to speak with my actions, and those actions have stated clearly that I am not willing to play chess with Neiman. By stating that Carlsen does not want to play against people that have cheated repeatedly in the past and that he is not willing to play chess with Neiman, Carlsen sent a clear message to organizers and sponsors of all future chess tournaments and events that if they invite Neiman to those events, Carlsen as the reigning world champion and number one ranked chess player in the world will not participate. By stating that at this time I am limited in what I can say without explicit permission from Neiman to speak openly, Carlson represented that he had additional evidence to support his defamatory accusations that Neiman cheated against him, but that Neiman is somehow preventing him, preventing him from disclosing it. Both of those statements are false. Chessacom, Ranch, and Nakamura republished Carlson's false accusation that Delugi is Neiman's mentor and helped him cheat. Shortly after Carlson's after Carlson falsely suggested that Neiman is training Neiman and helping him cheat, and around the same time that Carlson posted his September 26, 2022 statement, Chessacom and Ranch deliberately leaked years old emails between Lugi and Ranch to Vice Media. In an attempt to legitim legitimize the narrative that Lugi was a cheater and that by asso association, so was Neiman. In those emails, Dluki explained to Ranch that while he was playing in an online tournament on Chessacom in 2017, he allowed the students at his chess academy to view his screen and shout out suggestions for moves Dluki should play. Dluki stated that he later discovered that one of his students may have been suggesting moves that the student derived using a chess engine. On September 28, 2022, Vice published those emails as part of an article titled Chess Grandmaster Maxime Dlugi Admitted to Cheating on Chess.com Email Show, with a byline stating, Dlugi, who is one of Hans Niemann's coaches and was recently name-dropped by Magnus Carlsen, cheating in his own tournaments in 2017 and 2020, according to emails he exchanged with Chess.com. That same day, Nakamura reacted to the Vice article during one of his video streams. During that streaming video, Nakamura reiterated his false accusation that Neiman was not being completely clean about what's going on, with respect to Neiman's past with cheating. Nakamura further stated that based on the Vice story, there was no way that Chessacom is bluffing in its defamatory September 8, 2022 press release accusing Neiman of lying about the number of times he cheated on Chessacom and claiming to have shared unidentified detailed evidence of this with Neiman. In that same streaming video, Nakamura went on to state, you know what the million dollar question is, who is the student who, should, who suggested chess moves to Dlugi that came from a chess engine? Nakamura proceeded to clearly suggest that Neiman was that student. Neiman, uh, Nakamura's statements were false because, as stated above, Neiman did not lie about the amount and seriousness of his use of a chess engine on chess.com, and because Neiman was not the student who purportedly used a chess engine in suggesting moves to Dlugi during Dlugi's game on chess.com in 2017. Numerous officials and experts confirmed that there is no evidence that Neiman cheated against Carlsen or lied about his past online play. Since early September 2022, numerous chess officials and cheat detection experts have thoroughly examined the facts and circumstances and repeatedly confirmed that there is absolutely no basis to believe that Neiman cheated in his match against Carlsen at the Singfield Cup, or that Neiman lied about his use of engine assistance in online games. For example, on September 10, 2022, the Singfield, Cup, Singfield Cup's chief arbiter, Chris Bird, issued a statement confirming that there was no indication that any player has been playing unfairly in the 2022 Singfield Cup. This includes all rounds played to date. Around this date, Tony Rich, the executive director of the St. Louis Chess Club, which hosted the Singfield Cup, denied there was any indication of cheating by any player during the tournament. On September 21, 2022, 
2022, Mr. Bird, the Singfield Cup Chief Arbiter, issued a second statement on Twitter. To all the folks who contact me looking for comments slash interviews, as Chief Arbiter of the 2022 Singfield Cup, I would only say one player withdrew for personal reasons, and there is no indication that any player played unfairly in any of those games. Separately, Kenneth Reagan, a professor at the University of Buffalo, who developed the system used by FIDE to identify cheaters in chess games, and who is widely regarded as the world's foremost expert, expert on cheating in chess, including by Carlson and Nakamura, publicly confirmed that there is absolutely no statistical evidence that Neiman cheated in his game against Carlson, or at any other time during the past two years plus. Professor Regan issued his program to analyze games Neiman played in 106 separate events, together with online games and over-the-board games since January 2020. 2020. Professor Reagan clearly and unambiguously stated that this analysis produced no evidence of cheating in over-the-board games at all. The same was true with respect to the specific Singfield Cup game between Neiman and Carlson, where Professor Reagan stated, I found nothing. Similarly, Caleb Wetherill, who runs the chess analytics website Ponalize, stated that it's not out of the ordinary for an upside in, 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 an, in an individual game, especially like this, to happen. <clears throat> because it is natural for junior chess players to get better over time and eventually be their predecessors. Consistent, consistent with the findings of all these officials and experts, many unbiased top chess players have stated that after analyzing the Neiman Carlson match at the Singfield Cup in detail, Carlson simply played particularly poorly against Neiman, making several obvi obvious blunders that Neiman capitalized upon to win the match. Further confirming the lack of any evidence that Neiman cheated, FIDE itself issued a statement on September 23, 2022 admonishing Carlson's behavior and stating that is that it that is prepared to investigate the situation when the adequate initial proof is provided. To drown out legitimate sources clearing Neiman's of Carlson's defamatory accusations, Chessacom and Ranch published a defamatory report falsely accusing Neiman of cheating and lying about online cheating. October, on October 5th, 2022, Neiman was scheduled to begin competing in the U.S. Chess Championship Tournament, which, due to defendants' repeatedly defamatory accusations and blacklisting, is quite possibly one of the last competitive chess tournaments in which Neiman will ever be allowed to play. Neiman desperately hoped to be able to compete in that tournament, deliver an impressive performance, and lessen the blow of at least some of defendants' defamatory accusations. Yet, once again, defendants had different plans. In an attempt to not only further destroy Neiman's reputation, but also distract Neiman to the maximum extent possible in the hopes of torpedoing his chances for victory at the US Chess Championship Tournament, Chessicom and Ranch ensured that on October 4th, 2022, the day of the tournament's opening ceremony, their defamatory accusations would once again dominate the headlines. First, at approximately 3.30 p.m. on October 4th, 2022, the Wall Street Journal published an article titled Chess Investigation Finds That U.S. Grandmaster Likely Cheated More Than 100 Times. Contrary to the legitimacy connoted by the article's, by the article's inflammatory title, the investigation referenced therein was nothing more than a one-sided, self-serving and defamatory hit piece produced entirely by Chessacom which Chessacom maliciously leaked to the Wall Street Journal to fuel the spectacle of Carlson's cheating allegations on the eve of Neiman's potentially final competitive tournament. <clears throat> hours, hours after the Wall Street Journal published its article and created a frenzy within the chess world and the media at large, Chessacom published on its website the, the defamatory report upon which the article was based. Like Chessacom's defamatory September 8, 2022 press release, which was tactically made in conjunction with Carlson's accusations that Neiman cheated over the board, Chessacom's defamatory report falsely claims that Neiman cheated much more than he is publicly admitted to, including in many prize events, at least 25 stream games and 100 plus rated games on Chessacom, as recently as when he was 17 years old. Chessacom and Ranch knew that the def defamatory report is false because, among other things, 
it accuses Neiman of cheating in games where he was streaming. In other words, with both his face and his computer screen visible to the public. While Ranch previously admitted to Neiman that he knew Neiman had never cheated in any games he played while streaming. The defamatory report also states that Neiman purportedly confessed to these so-called cheating offenses during a call with Ranch in 2020, in 2020 which is also false. While Chesacom was forced to admit in the defamatory report that there is no concrete evidence pr pr proving that Hans is cheating over the board, that over-the-board professional chess is not Chesacom's domain of expertise, and that Chesacom does not advocate for that conclusion. The, defam the defamatory report nevertheless provided 10 pages of slanted analysis to support the conclusion that Neiman did cheat over the board at FIDE-sanctioned events. For example, the defamatory report states, while we do not doubt that Hans is a talented player, we know that his results are statistically extraordinary. Hans is consistently above many contemporaries in strength increases, even though he has, he has, uh, he has only recently shown the same caliber of play. Hans also had two rating plateaus that are uncharacteristics of the class of improving chess prodigies who become elite GMs. Hans has had an uncharacteristically erratic growth period marred by consistent plateaus. There are only 13 players currently ranked in the world's top 50 players who are younger than 25, and that Hans is the only player who became a GM at age 17, while the others all achieved the title between ages 12 and 16. The conventional wisdom is that if you are not a GM by age 14, it is unlikely that you can reach the top levels of chess. While that statement may seem, may seem discouraging, it has been borne out in modern chess history. Greats like Fischer, Kasparov, Carlsen, and almost all of the modern GMs who have been established as top 5 players were notable GMs by age 15 at the latest. There are many remarkable signals and unusual patterns in Hans's path as a chess player. Further, despite this defensively disclaiming any collusion with its partner Carlsen, which is frankly incredible and admitting that Fide is responsible for professional overboard chess, the defamatory report de dedicates another two pages to defending Carlsen's defamatory ac accusations, including by using, by using Carlsen's own statements. For example, in the defamatory report, Chess.com falsely claims that Neiman's explanation of his preparation was not supported by records of Carlsen's prior games. The means Neiman's post-game analysis claiming that this analysis and dependence of the engine seem to be at odds with the level of preparation Hans claimed was at play in the game and the level of analysis needed to defeat the world chess champion. Reports that Carlsen shared in a private conversation that his experience in playing Hans was unlike a game he's ever had. He emphasized that he has competed against numerous prodigies and players who exert themselves and show great effort throughout a long, difficult fight like this game. He described Hans's level of exertion as effortless and felt he never had a chance to get back in the game, which was extremely unusual for Magnus, who is known for his resourcefulness. Tries to bolster Carlson's purported private conversation by claiming that Hans's lack of emotion or excitement about the result was also noted by several others, and linking to videos of the reactions of notable players who have beaten Magnus. Claims that the game and the surrounding behaviors and explanations are bizarre. Highlighting that the defamatory report is nothing more than a false and malicious hatchet job on Neiman is that, as set forth above, its self-serving findings are directly refuted by e exhaustive analysis from Professor Ken Reagan, the world's foremost expert on cheating in chess. In fact, after Chessicom published the defamatory report, Professor Reagan directly discredited the false accusations made against Neiman in that document. Likewise, contrary to Chesacom's self-serving contention that it merely wanted to ensure the integrity of the 2022 Chesacom Global Championship Tournament, Chesacom allowed several players who had previously been banned from on online chess for cheating in high profile events to participate in that tournament. In fact, Sebastian Feller, a European Grandmaster who was caught cheating at the 2010 Chess Olympia Tournament and subsequently banned from participating in FIDE sanctioned events for nearly three years is currently playing in the same tournament as Carlsen, the 2022 European Club Cup, with no objection whatsoever from Chessacom or Carlsen. Likewise, Magnus recently played a, sanctioned, a FIDE sanctioned game against Parham Maxudlu, 
who was also banned for Lee leeches.org for cheating. Apparently Carlson only reserves his protests for those who have defeated him and threatened to undermine his financial value of Carlson's brand and, and the merger. Only hours after its release, Nakamura reacted to the Wall Street Journal article on his stream and endorsed Chessacom's self-serving accusations as true by, among other things, stating the fact that Neiman has cheated in these tournaments. Title Tuesday, 1, 2, 3. I mean, to me, the Title Tuesdays are bad enough as is, but then when you see that he cheated in the Pro Chess League as well... Nakamura then tactically weaponized the defamatory report to further defendants' efforts to blacklist Neiman from professional chess, stating that what happens with the US Championship? Because honestly, I feel like there's a real chance and now this has dropped. You could have top players in the event say they're not going to play against Hans. Defendants' defamatory accusations have destroyed Neiman's life. Despite the fact that Neiman did not cheat during his Sinkfield K match against Carlsen, or use an engine during online recreational matches more frequently than he has acknowledged. Defendant's coordinated campaign of defamation and misinformation has nevertheless already had the desired effect of destroying Neiman's reputation, career, and livelihood. On September 5, 2022, the same day that Carlson withdrew from the Sinkfoot Cup, Chessacom banned Neiman from its website and all of its future events including the, Sing the Chessacom Global Championship in October 2022, <clears throat> to which Neiman had previously earned an invitation. This was less than a week after Chessacom confirmed in writing, as recently as August 31, 2022, that it was super excited to have Neiman in the event, and looking forward to him competing. Yet the only thing that changed between August 31, 2022 and September 5th, 2022, was that Neiman defeated Carlsen at the Sinkfield Cup. Neiman had also arranged for a match against fellow up-and-coming teenage grandmaster Vincent Keimer to be hosted in Germany. However, following defendants' accusations, Keimer has refused to play in this match, specifically based on defendants' defamatory accusations against Neiman. Prior to defendants' defamatory accusations, Neiman had also been in extensive nego negotiations with the Tata Steel Chess Tournament which is one of the world's most pre prestigious tournaments and has Chessacom as one of his main sponsors, to have Neiman compete. However, in the face of the defendant's repeated false and defamatory accusations, the Tata Steel Chess Tournament has ceased all contact with Neiman. Carlson's point-blank refusal to, to participate in any tournament that invites Neiman and Chessacom's outright banning of Neiman from any tournament associated with it have cut Neiman off from the vast majority of tournaments. In a typical year, Neiman could expect to participate in approximately 50 major chess tournaments, each of which would generate approximately $5,000 to $15,000 in appearance fees for Neiman. Given Neiman access to potential cash, cash prices ranging between $5,000 and $100,000, and three, provide Neiman the opportunity to play matches against highly rated competitors to increase his rating. By being a excluded from these tournaments, Neiman has lost any opportunity to obtain any appearance fees or cash prizes, as well as the ability to improve his FIDE rating. By banning Neiman from online chess platforms, which defendants monopolize, Neiman's streaming career has also been destroyed. In fact, Neiman cannot even obtain employment as chess teacher at a reputable, chess, uh, uh, at a reputable school now that his reputation has been destroyed by defendants' lies. First cause of action slander against all defendants. Neiman repeats, reiterates, and re, and re each and every allegation as contained in the above paragraphs with the same force and effect as if fully set forth herein. Defendants published and repeatedly republished false and defamatory oral statements accusing Neiman of cheating during his match against Carlsen and in other unidentified competitive chess games and lying about cheating in the past as set forth more fully above. Defendant's statements were false as set forth more fully above. Defendants made the defamatory statements with full knowledge that such statements were false or with reckless disregard as to whether such statements were false as set forth more fully above. Neiman's reputation has been and continues to be significantly damaged by defendant's misconduct, including by 1. Losing his appearance fees for the Chessacom Global Championship, the Tata Steel Chess Tournament and future chess tournaments, to losing access, losing access to potential tournament prize funds, 
at the Chessicom Global Championship, the Title Suit Chess Tournament and future chess tournaments, and three, losing access to the vast majority of opportunities to increase his FIDE tournament uh, by increasing his FIDE rating by playing matches against other top-rated players. Four, having his reputation in the competitive chess industry and the public destroyed. Five, being prevented from obtaining lucrative endorsement, sponsorship, business and marketing opportunities. And six, being forced to incur significant costs, expenses and fees, including but not limited to attorney's fees, to try to remedy and mitigate the damage caused by defendant's misconduct. Accordingly, Neiman is entitled to a money judgment against defendants in an amount to be determined at trial, but not less than $100 million, including compensatory, consequential and punitive damages. A second cause of action, libel against all defendants. Neiman Neiman repeats, reiterates, and re-alleges each and every allegation as contained in the above paragraphs with the same force and effect as if fully set forth herein. Defendants published and repeatedly republished false and defamatory written statements accusing Neiman of cheating during his match against Carlson and in other unidentified competitive chess games and lying about cheating in the past as set forth more fully above. Defendant statements were false as set forth more fully above. Defendants made the defamatory statements with full knowledge that such statements were false or with reckless disregard as to whether such statements were false as set forth more fully above. Neiman's reputation has been and continues to be significantly damaged. Okay, I think this is basically the same as we read above. Accordingly, plaintiff... Yeah, this is also uh, the same as, um, as above. Okay, third cause of action. Violation of the Sherman Act 15 against all defendants. Neiman repeats, reiterates, and re each of every allegation as contained in above paragraphs with the same force um, uh, same force and effect as it fully set forth herein. Defendants acted in concert to improperly refuse to deal with Neiman as described more fully above, including Chessicom banning Neiman from its platform and sponsored events. Carlson refusing to play Neiman in any tournament or events. And defendants acting coll- collectively to cause organizers of professional chess tournaments to blacklist Neiman from participating in their events. The global competitive chess industry, including Chessicom and Play Magnus as global companies, affects trades or commerce among the several states, including internationally by operating international chess tournaments with cash prices within the United States and in other countries, as well as operating within the United States internet-based chess servers that are, that are accessible worldwide. Defendants' concerted actions to ban and blacklist Neiman constitute an improper and unreasonable restraint of trade because those actions remove a top chess player from the national and international chess circuit. Moreover, because defendants' conduct had the effect of coercing other market actors to refuse to do business with Neiman, defendants' agreement to ban and blacklist Neiman is a per se improper restraint of trade. Defendants' conduct has caused and will continue to cause substantial monetary damage to Neiman by, including but not limited to, preventing Neiman from participating in chess tournaments that award appearance fees and monetary prizes, as well as preventing Neiman from obtaining lucrative endorsements, sponsorships, business and marketing opportunities, and otherwise making a living from his skill at playing chess. Accordingly, Neiman is entitled to a money judgment against defendants in an amount to be determined at trial, but not less than $100 million, including compensatory consequential and punitive damages. Fourth cause of action, tortious interference with contract and business expectancies against all defendants. Neiman repeats, reiterates, really, okay, um, and reallegiates each and every allegation as contained in the above paragraphs, with the same force and effect as if fully set forth herein. Neiman had contracts and or valid business expectancies with the Chessicom Global Championship, Vincent Keimer, and the Tadasil Chess Tournament. As fellow members of the competitive chess industry, defendants had actual knowledge of Neiman's contracts and or business expectancies with the Chessicom Global Championship, Vincent Keimer, and the Tadasil Chess Tournament. Defendants intentionally interfered with Neiman's relationship with the global Chessicom Global Championship, Vincent Keimer, and the Tata Steel Chess Tournament by defaming Neiman and improperly attempting to restrain trade 
by coercing them to, the, to terminate their relationship with Neiman and blacklist him from future competitive chess matches, as set forth more fully above. Defendants had no justification for their conduct because, as set forth above, they each knew that their conduct was motivated solely to cause specific harm to Neiman rather, rather than protect any legitimate competitive interest. Neiman has suffered extensive damages as a result of defendants' conduct, including but not limited to the loss of appearance, fee, uh, appearance fees for the 2022 Chesscom Global Championship, the Tata Steel Chess Tournament and future chess tournaments, to access to potential price to uh, potential tournament prize funds at the 2022 Chesscom Global Championship, the Tata Steel Chess Tournament and future chess tournaments. Three, access to the vast majority of opportunities to increase his feeder rating by playing matches against other top players. Four, his reputation in the professional chess industry and the public. And five, potential endorsement sponsorships and business and marketing opportunities. Accordingly, Neiman is an entitled. Accordingly, and accordingly, Neiman is entitled to a money judgment against defendants in an amount to be determined at trial, including compensatory, consequential, and punitive damages. Fifth cause of action: civil conspiracy against all defendants. Neiman repeats, reiterates, and reallegates each and every allegation as contained. In above paragraphs with the same force and effect as it fully set forth herein. Uh, defendants schemed and agreed amongst themselves to repeatedly defame Neiman to members of the chess community and the public at large in order to improperly cause the chess community to refuse to deal with Neiman, as described more fully above, including by unlawfully banning Neiman from Chesscom's platform and sponsored events, and blacklisting Neiman from participating in professional chess tournaments. Defendants took multiple overt acts in furtherance of their scheme and agreement, including by making repeated false and defamatory statements accusing Neiman of having cheated during his match against Carlson on September 4, 2022, unlawfully banning Neiman from Chessicom's platform and sponsored events, and interfering with his professional relationships, as described more fully above. Neiman has suffered extensive damages as a result of defendants' conduct including but not limited to losing appearance fees for Chessicom. Okay, I think we read this a couple times. Um, yeah, I think this uh, was also stated above. Uh, for being forced to incur significant cost, expensive and fees, but including but not limited to a attorney's fees. Okay. According to Neiman, Neiman is a title of money judgment, but not less than 100,000, closing. Okay. Wherefore... Neiman hereby requests that the court grant the following relief. On the first cause of action, a money judgment in favor of Neiman against defendants, the specific amount of which to be determined at trial, but not less than $100 million plus prejudgment interest. On the second cause of action, action, a money judgment in favor of Neiman against defendants, the specific amount of which to be determined at trial, but not less than $100 million plus pre-judgment interest. On the third cause of action, money judgment in favor of Neiman against defendants, the specific amount of which should be determined at trial, but not less than $100 million plus pre-judgment interest. On the fourth cause of action, a money judgment in favor of Neiman against defendant, defendants, the specific amount of which should be determined at trial, plus, plus pre-judgment interest. On the fifth cause of action, a money judgment in favor of Neiman against defendants, the specific amount of which should be determined at trial, but not less than $100 million plus, plus prejudged interest. An award of Neiman's cost, expenses, and reasonable attorney fees incurred in connection with his action. Any other and further relief of the court deems just and proper. Dated New York, New York, October 20, 2022. Um... And these are his lawyers. All right, so that is Hans Niemann's lawsuit. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Also, make sure to subscribe. I'll keep you guys up to date. And that's pretty much all I wanted to say.